Well, now, I'm Clarence Bridgman. Yeah, someday I'm gonna have me a whole pack of little creatures just like you. I'm gonna take care of you and watch over you and see that you get plenty to eat and drink. Make sure no coyotes get a hold of you. Then I'm gonna eat you. Nah, it ain't no use going on like that. I got me a family to take care of. I got me a bound and bride. And in addition to a wife, I got me a father-in-law, too. And a stupid brother-in-law. And both of them riding around Colorado looking to shoot me. Supposing they ever find out where I'm at. Now, if you don't give me away, maybe I won't eat you after all. Best of the day. Name of Brucker, sir. My son, Micah. Morning. Sam Hartwig. Uh, Mr. Hartwig, what we're doing I'll here I'll talk. Is... Any reason I can't talk? No, Pa, you can talk. Shut your mouth. You a married man, Sam? I was. Blessed with children? Two. Both in California. Chasing moonbeams. Then you'll understand the father's feelings. I got a daughter, Sam. That daughter ran off with a piece of garbage, worked hired hand for me. That's the way he paid me back for the good home I give him. Well, now, uh, pretty brown hair, riding in a wagon. By Jingo's pa, we got him. By Jingo's. By Jingo's. This boyfriend of hers, he got a bad look in his eye. That's him, Sam. That's the one. They spent last night in my barn. They headed west this morning, said they were bound for California. What's a bustin' big about California? They're going. And Mr. Hartwig wins a cigar. Goodbye to them two rascals forever. Not forever, Claire. They just gotta get used to the idea. 
About 50 years without the likes of them will do me fine. Whatever, they're still my family. I'll remember that if they ever start shooting at me. Uh, once we get settled, we'll straighten it out with them. I'm settled pretty good right here. Mm. All right, you can save the sparking. And that was my part of the bargain. Her daddy's headed west, and you are headed for a day's work. Well, I'll be glad to lend a hand, Mr. Hartwig. Uh, just what do you got in mind? Well, for beginners, this barn could use some straightening up. Now, you claim you have a fair hand for blacksmithing. Uh, while you're at it, you could fix up these tools. After that, uh, you'll find a load of logs down by a hole in the fence. Uh, now, I'd appreciate it if you'd bring them up here and split them up for kindling. Uh, uh, then you can fix the fence. Uh, Mr. Hartwig, now, I finish all that, uh, you couldn't see your way clear to throw in a dollar now, could you? Well, I would like to, Mr. Bridgman, but that wasn't a proper part of our bargain. And you're a man who holds by a bargain. Yes, sir, Mr. Bridgman. I'll be catching up with you tonight, Rose. You just keep following that track on west. Mr. Hartwig says you'll be coming to a river. Now, that's where you make us camp. Where somebody tries to steal me away. You worth stealing? Tell you about that tonight.
Right there. Right like so. Sergeant Markey! You just keep whistling. Caught him looking kind of peculiar at the horses. I don't know what you call peculiar. I was riding along the riverbank, and I spotted some horses, and I stopped to look. Now, I ain't in a habit of stealing horses from the United States Army or anybody else. Trooper Ply, you think this citizen looks in any manner or form like Punch Logan? No, he don't, Sergeant. Any resemblance whatsoever to the party we're looking for? Can't say there is. What's the matter with you anyway? Going around treating people like that. What's the matter with you anyway? Well, all I did. All you did. I ain't interested in all you did. This young citizen ain't interested in all you did. Follow me, boy. Ten of hearts beats ten of club. Thank Don't you ever stop? That's well, seven in a row. Looky here. Your deal, Sarge. Wash them for me, will you? Thank you. What do you call yourself? Clarence Bridgman. I'm Sergeant Markey. What's your purpose, Clarence? Bound for the Outpost Valley, free and easy. Well, uh, we're out of Fort Claymore. Uh, now, Clarence, uh, you ever run across a fella calls himself Punch Logan? Or maybe you don't. Big fella. Face like 20 miles of bad road. Scar, right across here. No, can't say as I have. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think on it, will you? I don't have to. I'm sure. All right. That's business, then. All right. Cards are dealing. Right Got him. Coming out. Make him good this time, huh, Sarge? You uh, play at the old and mystical game with Red Dog? Oh, I've had occasion. You got any money, Clarence? Well, you see, my currency is for traveling on because I got the responsibilities of a married man. Did he say married? That's what the child said. Well, how's he know? He ain't old enough to handle the razor, let alone a woman. She do much complaining, boy? Need any help? Come on, leave him alone. It's clear that he's more. I, I mean, his wife. She don't allow him to gamble. Ain't that right, Clarence? New man, new dealer. In for a dollar. Let's just make some room. Well, I got you covered. Well, the queen of diamonds beats the jack of diamonds. Two in the pool. Next man. You're covered. And another sad loser. Four dollars gold. Fancy that. Not a club in sight. Now, ain't that a remarkable act of nature? Now, I'll make it $16 up for grabs. Gentlemen want all or any part of it. Yeah, that's how she goes. Sometimes I lose, sometimes I win. I guess that's why they call it gambling. Where'd you find him, anyway? Found him stealing horses. Well, $32. Now, I ain't no hog, so I'll just be on my cheerful way, and I thank you, Tim. That's our money, boy. Well, it used to be, before hard times rolled around. You ain't going anywhere. Oh, now, now, Corporal. That ain't no way for a gentleman to conduct himself. Pointing a loaded pistol like that. Now, Clarence, we ain't had our chances yet. You better get that wife of yours to teach you some gambling manners. Now, you just uh, let it ride and... Fling away. Thirty-two dollars. Doubles or quits. I got ten dollars. 
But I got four. Here's eight. Two. I got four. Well, that's only $28. I make it 32. Yeah, $32. That's right. Double or quits? Doubles or quits. Hmm. Well, that's how she goes. <laughs> Two of spades, I'm right. Ain't that a remarkable act of nature? <laughs> I would like to wish you, gentlemen, the worst of a bad night. <laughs> hey, Sonny, give your wife regards from the whole glorious regiment. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my wife? Yeah, it's you, all right. Now, you just keep your voice down, Clarence. We're gonna get along just like family. Only family I know is looking to shoot me. Now, what did you do with my wife? Well, it's about time. Clarence, where have you been? Me? Oh, I've been picking dandelions and dancing around the Maypole. Where do you think I've been? You tell him to quiet down. Quiet down now, Claire. Oh. Excuse me for living. Here's what's left of your dinner. I um, share the rest with Mr. Logan. Punch Logan. Punch by name, punch by destiny. And I want to thank you for your hospitality. Claire, he hasn't had a square meal in days. You're so late, I just doubled back looking for you. Did you see that soldier's camp down the stream? Well, they are looking for him. I know, Mr. Logan told me. Sonny, if you ain't gonna eat this. Rose, I want to talk to you. Oh, excuse us. Clarence. Now, would you tell me what in blazes is going on here? Clarence, sweetheart, Mr. Logan was very good to me on the road. Oh, he was now, was he, huh? Yes, he was. He chased off some sheep herders who were bothering me, and he helped me make the camp. And those awful soldiers are chasing him all around, and the poor man's all worn out. Well, he don't look worn out to me. All he wants is to travel with us for a little while and give us a helping hand. Rose, I don't need any helping hand. Now, what are they chasing him for? Nothing I'm ashamed of, boy. And that's gospel. Nothing mean or underhanded. You know, you two make the finest couple I ever seen. Pretty and handsome. Handsome and pretty. I bet you can take care of yourself, too. How old are you, boy? I'm, a, I'm going on 20. 19. Well, I'm a deal better than twice that. But I tell you, I've learned some things that'll come in mighty handy along the road. That is, if you'll have me. Well, that's a dandy offer, but... See, I've been making my own way just fine since my folks passed on to glory. Now, you mind if I ask you a personal question, Mr. Punch Logan? Try me. Well, if you're so all-powerful wise, 
What are you doing getting chased around the mountains by a pack of shiftless soldiers? That's the right question. That's it. You know, if, if I had a son like you or, or a daughter like her, I couldn't wish that child a better lifelong partner than the one you got, both of you. Now, I'm, I'm banking that you won't turn me into those soldiers. What they're looking for is a, is a lone rider. That's why I'd welcome some traveling companions. I'd be glad to work my way. He's a nice man. Now, you go over there while I change for bed. What do you mean, go over there? Well, like I say, we're not alone anymore, Claire. And whose fault is that? Well, go on. How come you and the missus are traveling the road? Now, you tell me what they're chasing you for, and I'll tell you my end of it. You got yourself a deal. You go first. I figured. Well, I was, uh, working my way out of Wyoming after my folks died. I got as far as Kansas. Mr. Brucker's layout. I was all a 15, first time I set eyes on Roselle. So I hired out to him. I did the work of three men, which is six times more than his stupid son, Micah. But you did, too. And last year, I mentioned to Mr. Brucker how I'd been saving him for my future, and uh, maybe Roselle and me get married one day. He told me that his daughter was 16, and I was nothing. And 16 added to nothing, according to his arithmetic, was still nothing. And those were my chances of marrying his daughter. Hard-hearted man, that's a fact. And a couple of months ago, a preacher fella came through from Colorado. Told me about this valley where he had a little house and how it was all as green and good as God could make it. Except he couldn't enjoy it anymore because there was so much sin in the world that needed his attention that he had to go around the country bringing the good news. And so ended up, I handed over my savings and he made over the deed. Now Roselle and me are on our way to the outpost valley. Did you say the outpost? That's where we're going to make our home. Now, ain't that one for the books? Here I am heading for the self-same place. Well, now, ain't that a stroke of luck? Now, what about them soldiers chasing you? I killed a man, Claire. He was rotten, and he'd hurt more folks than you got fingers and toes. The way it was, you'd have done the same thing. Clara, you can come to bed now. he had a reason. Well, I hope he had a reason. It's better than if he was a thief. I mean, if he was a thief, we'd never be able to trust him. Yeah. That's one way of looking at it. Last G. 
just fine. That's one more thing I got him to thank for. Claire? What were you doing with those soldiers? Mm. I was gambling. Win or lose? I lost a dollar. She's a husband, and she's sure enough a wife. She's as pretty as a picture. And here he told us she was an ugly old beast. Now, don't you be scared, young lady. We may look like soldiers, but what we is is love. Ain't you gonna introduce us to your missus, Clary? gentlemen. This here is Roselle Bridgman, my wife. Rose, I want you to meet a genuine detachment of the regular horseback riding United States Army. Every man jack a fighting fool and eager to get a bullet square in the gut supposing he doesn't keep on riding right clear of here. And if my husband says it, he's gonna do it. You got put that thing away with it. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, man. Fair enough, Mr. Bridgman. Suppose old Logan went. Probably over them hills and far away. Scared off good. So you and me, Rose, we're just gonna have to get through life without his experience and wisdom. Looks like he fixed us some breakfast. Yeah. Good for Punch Logan. Cause that's gonna give us an extra half hour of nothing but sweet privacy. You just showed yourself up to be a dangerous individual, Claire. I don't know. That's right, you don't know.
Here's our dinner. Claire, let me do it. Oh, now, Rose. Well, feeding is my job, isn't it? Well, not hunting. That ain't any woman's job. I'm not any woman. So am I. You ain't stopping me, mister. Gardner, the other one, he got between us. They were hunting, just like us.
declare it's Paul and Micah. Well, that's just the very thing I needed. What are you gonna do? They try and take you away. There's gonna be enough fighting to last all of us till Christmas. Claire, it's my own family. Well, I ain't exactly a stranger. Don't you talk to me. If you don't want to talk to her, you've come a long ways for nothing. Uh, nothing but trash, Bridgman. Filthy tramp trash. You've ruined my daughter. You've spoiled a fine, innocent girl. Well, we're still taking her back. You're taking nothing. My sister's coming home. Now, uh, whatever he told you, you, you don't worry, Roselle. You're what I'm worried about, Micah. You and Pa. I love you both, but Claire's my married husband now, and you'll have to understand that. I'll bet he is. That's one bet you're gonna win. You take one more stupid step, Micah, you're gonna get shot right in your stupid foot. Who you calling stupid? I don't want to do you or your father any harm, so just don't you make me. Stop it. Stop it, all of you. Come on, Rose, honey, let's go. You're taking nothing. Guns down. Hear me? Not you, Mr. Bridgman. Not required under the circumstances. Who in the hell is he? What I am is I'm a friend of the family. Would that be a fair statement of the prevailing circumstances? Fair enough. Mr. Bridgman? You want to permanently remove these rascals from contention, you ain't never going to have a better chance. So just start shooting. I don't want to shoot anybody. What, are you crazy? No, I figured you were. I know they are. Just because I came to get my own flesh and blood after this thief stole her? Paul, will you just listen to us and hear what happened? I stopped listening when you left my house. Now, the subject up for debate is whether this lady is the bona fide bride of Mr. Clarence Bridgman. You got the floor, Clarence. She just told him we are married. Man and wife, lock, stock, and barrel. Married by the Reverend Willie Purcell. Now, you do remember him, don't you? We got us a proper paper and all. Now, that proves it, black and white. Now, this ain't nothing but a land deed. Well, we got us that, too. There, look at that. Now, we bought us this property from the Reverend Purcell over in the Outpost Valley. We're heading there, Pa, to make our home. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. So you better get used to the idea. And you too, Micah. Case rested, Brideside can talk. You may be married. That still don't make it right. Well, what is so eternal wrong with it? You could have asked me for a hand. I did ask you. I'll see you in hell first. Oh, Pa, we've done talking with you. Marriage to a hired hand don't count. Now, you may be damaged goods, Rose, but you're still coming. Now you went and done it. The floor is now open for question. Oh, Lord. Micah, you're my wife's own brother. I don't want to fight you any more than I have to. Now, Micah, I'm going on record. You just leave us alone. We got no quarrel with you. Now, you, Mike, Micah, you cut it out now. Micah, I don't want to do this anymore. You stop hurting yourself and we'll call it a draw and leave each other be. Draw.
Now, so far today, I have faced me six soldiers, one mountain lion, and one brother-in-law. Ain't that enough? Well, I guess you're a man, all right. Roselle. Shouldn't have run off like that. There was no other way, Pa. I love you. So does Micah. You understand that? I love you too, Pa. I'm leaving Micah with you. He'll help see his sister get settled before he comes home. Any objections? It's your family, Rose. It's up to you. No objections, Pa. deal so far. I've had worse. Only trouble is, there's a kicker in it. I can't take care of you. I know you can. We can take care of each other. Yeah. All of us can. There's blankets. Anything else you want from the wagon? Micah, just do me a favor. Will you stop helping me? I can unload my own wagon. Look, Pa told me to help, so I'll help. Now, I ain't the world beater you are, but we are kin to each other. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. When did they quit mining this old place? Back in the 50s. There's another mine up on the crest. We'll use their own trail to cross over. Cross over to where? Out Post Valley. We're crossing at Jester's Pass, Mr. Logan. That's tough enough. Maybe you, not me. That's where them soldiers are headed. I'm going to use the mine trail. Well, that's fine for you. You ain't got a wagon. That's right. I'm all by my lonesome. Meat's ready. What's the kicker? How's that? You said, Mr. Punch Logan, that there's a kicker in what we got going. Well, it goes back to the Reverend Willie Purcell. Uh, he was a fellow you said come 
preaching through Kansas? I did. His name is on the wedding paper and the deed. Well, I met the self-same Willie Purcell in Wyoming. I ain't got no wedding paper, but children, what I seem to have here is a deed. Michael, will you just for once stop eating? They're both of them for the same parcel of land. Both signed by the good reverend in his own personal hand. The place sounded so good when he was singing the praises, I, I bought it myself. Clarence Bridgman, we've been fleeced. We've been took. Are you telling me that we both own the same piece of land? Maybe both. Maybe neither. Maybe there's a whole army of us marching up to claim that parcel. Well, that's just fine. That's just double dandy. <laughs> and what are you laughing about? How come somebody as smart as you done a dumb thing like that? Like you say one more word, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. All right, we're going to settle this and settle it right here and now. Good. How? What do you mean, how? Well, we we could start shooting at each other. Or... Knives is always good. Uh, how about cards? You a gambling man? I give it up. Then we're stuck, ain't we? We're not married, Claire. What? If that Willie Purcell lied about the land, then he's probably lying about the marriage, too. Oh, now, Rose, honey. It doesn't follow. Not necessarily. Claire, how do you know he was even a preacher? Well, he was preaching, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right, Rose. I heard it myself. Yeah, you see? Well, if he was pretending or lying or something, I'm nobody's wife. That is the looniest thing I've ever heard. And if I'm not your wife... You don't know that for a fact. What it amounts to is that we're living in sin, Clarence, sin. He could have been a regular preacher and just a reckless land seller all at the same time, now, couldn't he? And since when did you get so proper and religious? Well, thank you kindly. I never realized you were so casual about damnation, Clarence. For Pete's sake, Rose, we sleep together, don't we? Oh, don't be vulgar, Claire. We are man and wife. Now, what has changed about that? The way you've been carrying on lately, I think you'd be pleased not to have to claim Mike as your brother-in-law. Well, he's stuck with me. Look, I took one beating getting convinced you're married. That's enough. Well, you have more sense than your sister. All I'm saying, Claire, is that if it turns out that I'm still single, I want to think about how I'm spending my night sets so. off. It seems to me it comes to a nice moral point with the weight of the argument slightly favoring the lady. Now, if I was her father... Which you ain't. I'd want to make sure that my daughter's interests were protected pending further investigation into the life and times of the Reverend Willie Purcell, which protecting I'd be glad to do, Miss Brucker. As long as we're all traveling together my way. Thank you, Mr. Logan. I'll be saying my good nights now. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. You got nothing to worry about now, Rose. You got a genuine murderer taking care of you. I am going to bed. Claire, what marriage is to women is it's a it's a different sort of proposition. It's what keeps them feeling comfortable, knowing that you're tied down right up the line. Your feelings just ain't enough. What they need and demand is a personal guarantee of the Almighty Himself. You ever been married? Nope. And kindly keep your wisdom to yourself.
That's why they give it up. She won't take the wagon. Well, I ain't leaving anything that's mine. I only need two horses. Let's cut the other ones loose. I just where do you think you're going? I'm going with you. Oh, no. I only take relatives and friends. One at a time.
All right, dear fellas. Come on. See if you can force it up. See if there's a board you can pry it up with. See your valley? I want to talk to you. When I hear that apology I've got coming, then we'll start the conversation. Well, it just so happens I don't remember anything I'm sorry for. You don't? No. Well, you as much as called me a courtesan. All right, Rose, what's that? You know, like Lily Cowper? Oh, her. And don't think that I don't know about you and her. Well, you are just bound and determined to find something to argue about, aren't you? Personal property is about four hours the other side of a town named Columbine, wherever that is. There's a ranch house back there. You better ride over and ask our bearings. Oh, you got a broken leg? I ain't that anxious to advertise myself. Well, anybody else coming? Sure, I'll come with you. you killed? Yeah. Was he married? Sort of. Oh. Well, he probably had it coming.
If it ain't the champagne husband of the world. Well, allowing for off days. Where's your wife? Where's yours? You boys stopping by? Well, just for directions, ma'am. You're welcome to come in if you care to. I'm Beth Lambert. I'm Clarence Bridgman, uh, Micah Brucker. Ma'am. Afternoon, Mr. Bridgman. <laughs> that ain't Mr. Bridgman. That's young Claire. Nah, that ain't young Claire. That's Sir Galahad. You following us, Galahadsy? Well, this is just a regular battlefield, isn't it? <laughs> As I was telling these uh, soldiers, living alone here, I take the notice of strangers. And I never saw one like, like the man they're looking for. You know, Micah, this here is a noble crew I was telling you about that was chasing after your Scarface fella. Huh? Well, that fella you said you run into yesterday, uh, with Punch. Punch, what's his name? Uh, Logan. Punch Logan. Oh, him, yeah, Logan. Yeah, yeah. What'd you say? No, he was pitching camp up in the Black Rock country about oh, 20 miles north of here. I was heading south from a grandma's funeral. Hmm. All right, knock your butts and let's get mounted. Come on, you wildflowers, mounted. I was just falling in love. Farewell, my love. Lover boys, break away, break away. Mount up the boys in blue into the sunset. Let's go. Mount up. Let's go. Go where? Where you saw Logan. And you'd better be right. Or Grandma is going to be headed north to your funeral. Boy, ain't as thick as I thought he was. Uh, ma'am, uh, what are you doing living out here all by yourself? My, my husband died three years ago. There was a hired hand, but last month he went off to be a sailor. Would you like to work here? <laughs> well, thank you. Maybe just a few chores. Well, I'm, I'm all accounted for. I'll give you dinner. Ma'am, I'd like to stay, but I, I should be getting back. Just for tonight. I'm, I'm afraid they'll come back. Well, uh, now that I think about it, I ain't got anything so important that it can't wait a few hours. Thank you, ma'am. The wagon track goes straight into Columbine. Do you have to go there tonight? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I got me some business. My name is Beth. Beth. Do you have a girl in Columbine? No, there's nobody there, that's for sure. Do you have one anywhere else? Well, not lately. Not the way things have been going. You must be very lonely. I haven't been bored. Bored and lonely are two different things. I guess it gets pretty lonely for you.
Claire. I'll show you where to sleep. Uh, Beth, uh, Mrs. Lambert, uh, I want to be completely fair and honest with you. And, uh, well, you don't know what I am. What are you, Claire? Well, I am a married man. Are you, Claire? For a fact, uh, I wouldn't lie about something like that. Um, ma'am, you know, you, you could catch cold standing around like that. Well, it's uh, getting late, and I I better run because, well, I got to get up early in the morning, and uh, see, my wife uh, is waiting for me down. She's waiting for me, and, uh, well, I think I'll just say good night. Uh, good night. Excuse me. Where do I look for the sheriff around here? You can look for him anywhere, but we'll find him. Sullivan. I seem to have sort of <laughs> mislaid my wife. She's a young girl, and uh, she just sort of disappeared into thin air. And I think I just found her. Sixty-five. <laughs> All right, Roselle, I'm waiting for an explanation. Is that so? Yes, that is so. Well, it just so happens I've got myself a job. Is that a fact? <laughs> That's a fact. Doing what? Serving drinks and, uh, whatever. And just what kind of whatever? Well, never mind the whatever. 
We'll look after this child better than you ever done. Goody for her. And maybe you'd like to explain what you were doing last night. When I got so worried, I rode down to that ranch house, looked in through the kitchen window, and saw you there, enjoying yourself with that woman, practically on our wedding night. What do you mean, our wedding night? Not that I care a hoot. You're the one who's been carrying on that we ain't even been married. Which fact I am now grateful for. It seems that Pa was a lot smarter than me at reading your true nature, Clarence Bridgman. Roselle. I want to wish you the best of enjoyment with your new life, because I am now and forever done with it. Oh, forget him, honey. It's the only way. Hey, Bridgman. Come on, lover. I've just been talking to a lawyer. Where are you going with my horse? I've just been talking to my wife, and I want to thank you for taking such good care of her. Well, you ought to thank me. If it wasn't for me, she'd be stomping her way back to Kansas right now, instead of being mothered to death, waiting for you to come take her. Now, that lawyer says we got to get out to the Purcell place and claim our property. I ain't interested in any claims, and I don't give a hoot about any property. Ever since I come to this country, I ain't been nothing but threatened and fought and fleeced and skinned. So I've had my fill of Colorado and marriage, and you in the bargain. <clears throat> like another owner's already showed up. Well, you paid for it. You coming in? Bridgman, how would you like to shake hands with the Reverend Willie Purcell? Well, Reverend Purcell. Hmm? Why, it's young Mr. Bridgman. Oh, I used to be. God bless you, boy. Seems the Reverend run into more sin out in the world than he had a right to expect. That's true. So he come home here to get refreshed. I now prepare to resume my travels. It is a benighted land out there, boys, sunk in darkness. Well, Reverend, we got ourselves a little bit of gloom right here at home. Now, how come you went and sold off your land to both of us? Oh, it's God's land. Sir. It's all God's land. Reverend, it may be God's land, but you got our money. Had the money, had the money. That was plenty unfortunate. Reverend, now, per perhaps I was tempted to oversell the place a bit in a fit of exuberance. Oversell? Perhaps I was. If exuberance is a sin, it's a sin that I, I must plead guilty. For. Reverend, you had no There's right no to do what you did. No one of us is perfect. I just thank the good Lord that I have been spared the sin of arrogance. See, I faced my blemishes head on, nose to nose, as you might say. Now, a good-looking young fellow like you, you wouldn't be afflicted with a curse of overweening pride, would you? Well, now, just being proud, I don't think there's no, any No, 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 pride, no, 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 of course not. How about avarice? 
Well, Avarice, no, no, I'm pretty no, sure Avarice, about Avarice. No, pride, good, good. And you will understand how a poor man like me is doing the Lord's work. A dollar here, a dollar there, and it's all melting away like the snows of spring warmed by my compassionate heart. And not, and not a penny of it for myself. Everything that I've ever needed is right here in, in this place. And now I, I, I'm going to leave it again. <laughs> I'm going to leave it for you and for your forgiving friend. Now, don't try to thank me. And there's no hard feelings on anybody's part. Well, I know when I'm licked. Uh, speaking of hard feelings, Claire, ain't you got one more question to ask? Huh? Oh, yes. Reverend, there's something I want to know. Mm -hmm. There's something I got to know. Uh -huh. Are you a regular preacher? A brass-bound and riveted Marian preacher? Am I a preacher? <laughs> well, are you a ancient? Indeed I am. I have married folk a hundredfold, since now and forever by the laws of heaven. Half of Outpost Valley is my personal doing. Well, that does uh... it. Not a word. You better come out of there. your friend here. You come out of there now. You coming with us. I'll just come on out in the open like I'm telling you, because you are looking at a man there's damn little left to live for. Move it. Hey, you get. Get up there. for their sins. Sergeant 
Marquis. <clears throat> it is my duty to inform you that you're under arrest for the crimes of... Uh, for committing the crimes of striking an officer and deserting the forces... Sergeant Markey! You don't need to tell me what I did. You speak when you are spoken to. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, Sergeant Major. You filthy, rotten, bow-legged scum. You miserable, sloppy, disgusting dregs. You crud bucket of pig swell tramps. You weak, stinking, slobbering jelly bellies. I ought to turn the whole light-livered pack of you into three cents worth of cat meat. Now, I may be a prisoner, but I am still given the orders when it comes to the likes of you. Now, get your weapons and fall in! Are you a deserter, Mr. Logan? Mainly, I expressed my opinion of a certain captain by knocking him into a manure pit. Knowing you, I can say you'd have done the same thing. I bet I would, too. Well, the way I'll talk it, knowing the Army the way I do, I won't get more than six months. It's better than doing harm to those poor, pathetic souls. All he is is soldiers. Man up! And sit straight! Now, uh, this deed ain't no good. What I'd probably do, I'd probably tear it up right now for 20% of your own prospects on this place. You mean partners? One working partner, one advising partner, out of the depths of my knowledge. Well, Sergeant Major, you just got yourself a deal. Mr. Bridgman, you just got yourself a deal. Well, there's one thing. Why did you tell me you killed a man? A bald falsehood, son. A, a small lie of convenience. Times being the way they are, a, a good sympathetic shooting's got it all over any other crime you'd care to mention. And it's a lot easier to explain to strangers. <laughs> well, just with a result. Roselle. Soldiers to slip, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Where is your sister?
me, folks. Uh, you'll just excuse me for a minute. My name is Clarence Bridgman, and I'm newly come to the Outpost Valley, and I don't want any misunderstandings. Now, I intend to make my home here and do the best I can, along with my bounden bride, Roselle, who is sitting right over there, claiming we ain't properly married. And I say we were married. Clarence Bridge, when you get out of here. And by the same Reverend Willie Purcell who tied the knot for some of you, and he's standing right over there. I did indeed usher this young couple into holy matrimony, and I hereby declare that their marriage was authentic and uh, unavoidable. And I further declare that the participating individuals are therefore entitled to full conjugal rights and privileges. Now, there's the fact. Rose, I'm taking you home. I ain't going. Yes, you are. No, you can go back to your lady friend. You're my lady friend. Didn't you hear the lady? She said she didn't want to go. Well, I say she does. We say likewise. I say she does, too. I reckon you're right. <laughs> now. You keep away from me, Clarence Bridgman. <laughs> no, go away! No! <laughs> of my vested powers. My Georgie, that's doing nothing but giving the firm a bad name. It ain't doing my business any good either. Clarence, let me go! 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 Clarence Bridgman! You, I hate you, Clarence Bridgman! Yeah. Pop told me to see her settle down. I guess she got her settled down pretty good. <laughs> uh, you come out and see us anytime you want, Micah. You too, Logan. I'm a partner. I don't need no invitation. Yeah, well, you got it anyway. Micah, we'll see you Sunday dinner. Oh, Micah, my own brother! Oh, I hate you! Logan! Micah, help me! Rose, the woman in that ranch house, all she did was scare me. I love you. You let me be! Rose, come back here. Come here now. You come here. Don't you leave me alone! Now look at this place, look at it. Now see it, it's ours. Now them soldiers shot it all up. And I don't know how many other people Reverend Purcell sold it to, but this is where we are gonna live. We're gonna raise our children here. This is the Bridgman place. Now you say it, Rose. Say it. The Bridgman place. Oh, Claire. Well.
Well, come on. Ooh.